Three, two, one. Que pasa, YouTube? How's it going, everybody? How for you guys? Today, another video regarding Ultra Sun and Moon. And this is something that I was kind of interested in doing because a draft league format has been a lot that I've um, that I've been doing a lot of lately. I can't send it properly. And I wanted to discuss a couple Pokemon. They got some little bit of buffs, maybe could make them more uh, valuable and more viable in a draft league format. But I am not alone. I have one of my good friends here with me today, a monster in the draft format. And uh, as many of you guys may know him, he is Mr. Matty Brolic. Yeah, pause the YouTube. Oh. Matty bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I made a cameo in in one of his recent uploads. You guys want to watch that? Right. <laughs> so yeah, Matty, uh, inform them a little bit about yourself. My name is. I also upload a lot of draft format content. I play a little bit of Smogon format as well, but I like to mostly upload draft league games. And yeah, I'm really excited about Ultra Sun and Moon. Leo's been. A really good friend of mine the draft format for a while now so it's awesome to see airing it up and we decided we wanted to make a collab on some of the new pokemon that are coming out for ultra sun and moon because we're both excited to see how these new mons will pan out so if you guys want to see draft league content you guys know where to all right so we're back a uh, quick little hiccup there but everything should be resolved and you guys should be able to hear Maddie. Uh, pretty good from here on out. But yeah, with that being said, if you guys are excited for this, show off your support, hit that like button down below. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about these Pokemon and do you think they will be better in Draft League format or do you think that it doesn't really matter that they just got one or two new moves? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So as you guys can see on the screen here, we have our first Pokemon, which is Necrozma. And Necrozma got a bunch of handy new little tools thanks to move tutors in Ultra Sun and Moon. And I think the biggest thing about it is the fact that it got Heat Wave. I think like Heat Wave alone is like a good enough coverage move to run on Necrozma with um, most of its special moves. And then it also got Earth Power, which is pretty cool. What do you think, Mr. Matty? Necrozma was really solid Pokemon in both OU or I, I just in general Smogon tiers and Sun and Moon draft format. Um, I mean, it wasn't really an OU Pokemon, but it's that type of Pokemon that has good stats, just some decent support moves that allowed it to, and a really good ability as well, that allowed it to perform pretty well in pretty much any tier you put it in. And in the draft format, it was definitely a threat because it could set up on a lot of different Pokemon and it had good setup options in Rock Polish, Calm Mind, um, Swords Dance, and it also had access to Stored Power. So if you don't have a Dark type, then Necrozma is a monster threat. So it was a pretty solid Pokemon in that regard, but it just lacked so many coverage options, which is really frustrating because it has such high special attack, but can't use it too well unless it's using that stored power set. So it getting both Heat Wave and Earth Power is huge, and Knock Off is just generally an awesome move. So the fact that it also has Swords Dance with Knock Off, and then it also gets a new move called Photon Geyser, which can be either a physical or a special attack, that's stronger than Psycho Cut, that makes Ooh. Necrozma just a sick threat. And I think it's going to be um, definitely a top-tier Pokemon in the draft format. It was already pretty solid. I would say it was maybe a fifth-round pick, something around there, fourth, fifth-round pick, depending on, on how much you value its setup options. But now I think this thing could be a second-round pick or like a really justifiable second, third-round pick. That is kind of crazy. Now, I've, I've always thought that Necrozma has been kind of like a jack-of-all-trades where it can do a little bit of everything, but it doesn't do anything really good, basically. And I think with, just again, just between Heat Wave and Earth Power, man, like that's, I definitely feel like Necrozma is going to be, be a lot more useful to teams because now it's more of an offensive threat that can now hit what it may have been uh, used to be walled by, or it can just have that extra coverage move to hit something for that super effective hit that it needs it to potentially sweep because of it having Calm Mind and Swords Dance and Rock Polish and all of that. I'm genuinely excited to use Necrozma. I did use it when Ultra, when the Sun and Moon first came out, and it was a little bit lackluster, but now with it getting these new moves, I definitely would love to try it out in a draft format. Uh, any last words on Necrozma, Mr. Medi? <clears throat> no, I think you covered it. All right, so moving on to the next one here. 
we have a Magirna. Now, this one is not exactly like too crazy or anything too spectacular, but if you can use Z Heal Bell on, a, on um, Magirna, I think that just kind of adds like an extra an extra thing to Magirna that uh, makes it just a little bit better. If anything, Maddie knows exactly how broken or potentially broken Magirna can really be. And we're still kind of in that little gray area on whether or not it should be uh, allowed in leagues or banned in leagues. But do you think Heal Bell like necessarily adds anything too crazy to Magirna, Maddie? You know, it's tough to say. Magirna is a monster, and in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I don't know if maybe some new threats being introduced will make Magirna less potent, so maybe they'll allow it in some more leagues. I don't know. I think maybe it's worth a test, but um, without a doubt, it has the potential to just be completely busted in regular Sun and Moon draft format, especially with the use of Z moves. So um, if it's allowed to use something like Z Heal, heal Bell, that just makes it so much more of a threat because, yeah, it could heal its own status as well as its team status. But if you're using some type of Calm Mind Magirna and you get up a couple Calm Minds or even Calm Mind Trick Room and then you have a turn where you can go for Z Heal Bell and just heal yourself back up to full, then Magirna with its godly defensive typing and its insane power after a couple boosts is just going to be really hard to take down. Um, it's definitely not... A, like completely broken set where it's like oh no z heal bell how are you going to stop that pokemon but it really is a nice tech that you have to prepare even extra for when magirna is already really tough to prep for and just the fact that magirna is so bulky and has such good defensive typing the fact that it could learn heal bell in general is really useful because you could have some type of leftovers bulky heal bell set that can come in on a lot of different threats due to its amazing typing and just get off heal bells pretty easily. So overall, I think that makes Magirna that much better. I wouldn't say it just makes it so completely busted that no one can handle it, but it definitely adds to Magirna's arsenal in a pretty big way. And I'd be interested to see whether it would have a shot to be not banned in Ultra Sun and Moon Leagues because it's already possibly ban worthy, probably ban worthy, I should say. Yeah, so hopefully uh, the impact of this does not change. Or who knows, maybe it'll finally be manageable because of the, of the new metagame that'll be happening. But we'll see how things uh, play out. So moving on to the next mon here. And I think this one in general is it's just a Pokemon that got infinitely better because of all of its new uh, move tutor moves and the fact that it now can learn close combat. And Komoo has been a Pokemon that I really felt has been lackluster like any any time I hear anything about Kamo, it's that it just it doesn't do things that well. Like yeah, it's, uh, special coverage is really nice, but it can't take advantage of its uh, physical side because it never really had any good uh, stab options along with good coverage moves. And what it can now be taught by move tutors is that it gets uh, the, all the elemental punches, which is really nice. Sub bulk up can now become a thing because of. Uh, draining punch and just dragon dance Kamoa has become infinitely better because now it gets a solid form of stab in close combat and that extra little bit of power creep from sky uppercut to close combat i think can really make a huge difference for Kamoa. and now it gets an also cool new little tech in stealth rocks which i think is pretty awesome what, what do you think maddie yeah i think Kamoa is really an interesting option now because this Pokemon, if it was released back in Generation 5, it would have just been a monster. Because some of the best Dragon Dancers back then were things like Dragonite, which aren't even as fast as Kamo'o. And when there were no fairies back then, then the Dragon Fighting typing was just amazing. Because the only thing that resisted Dragon was Steel. So Fighting would just be able to bust right through it. But then, when Gen 7 did come out, it didn't really have good fighting moves, as Leo was saying. So, the physical sets which would typically be the best considering its stats just were not that good because its coverage moves were you know decent but not great and dragon step is generally kind of dangerous to spam because dragon claw isn't that strong and outrage getting mm -hmm. locked into outrage with fairies around or steel types around that could revenge you is a dangerous game to play so now that it has close combat a really powerful fighting stab plus a way to boost its stats in Dragon Dance, that is very threatening in and of itself. But now Drain Punch, like Leo said, is really nice with a potential bulk upset. 
it has much better coverage now with the elemental punches and having stealth rock is an awesome tech because Kamo'o has really nice mixed attacking stats so there aren't many hazard removers that would be able to safely defog or spin on Kamo'o which is kind of cool because it just it probably packs a move in its move set that could potentially hit you really hard or knock you out with either super effective damage or just powerful stabs so that's pretty cool and it also gets a new Z move that will probably be banned in draft format possibly <laughs> yeah no <laughs> yeah probably, almost <laughs> definitely <Z> right <laughs> <laughs> definitely like in in OU I'm curious to see if that if this thing will go to Uber because it, or if its Z move at least will get banned because it gets a powerful new Dragon Z move that also raises all of its stats and Omni boosting stat moves are are almost always banned in draft <laughs> draft format leagues. So yeah, there's there's no way something that does damage and then also boosts your stats is gonna be legal. Like I know what am e I even if it does crazy? lose that. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's. But that's kind of the cool thing about Kamo is that now it has potential to possibly be, uh, if anything, with it could be UU now. I know, I know we're talking about draft format, but if anything, like I could say it would be a UU or maybe a decent-ish OU Pokemon. It just really depends on how good its Z-move can really um, make Kamo work out. If you, you get what I'm trying to say, though. But yeah. Kamo is still a pretty cool Pokemon. Anything else you would like to add on to Kamo? Uh, no, I... Um... I think you pretty much covered it. I, I am definitely excited to see where this Pokemon goes because I was just so disappointed with its move pool back in uh, Sun and Moon. So now I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's, it's given a whole new life to Kamo, and I really hope that this thing uh, shoots up in usage and drafts. So moving on to this next pick, and this one is uh, more of like an interesting fun pick because Passimian is a very... Again, like interesting Pokemon in my opinion. It it has a really solid uh, base attack in 120. Like that's amazing. Uh, its speed, while not being the best, it, it's okay. Like this can definitely be a a decent scarf Pokemon, and its defenses are are pretty pretty decent. But the place where Passimian really failed is while its hidden ability is not released, it also still does not exactly have the best type of uh, coverage moves. And that's where move tutors I think are definitely gonna make. Passimian a little bit more uh, of a potential option to be chosen. Now, I'm not saying that this thing is going to be picked over everything possibly in whatever tier it's in, but it could make it more appealing because between uh, Seed Bomb, Gunk Shot, and Knock Off, I think those three are, are some really decent covered moves to be added to the repertoire of Passimian because, again, it can take advantage of its high base 120 physical attack stat with close combat. Also gets U-turn, which is nice for momentum, so hopefully when uh, it's hidden abilities release we can see a little bit more on Passimian. so uh, maddie what do you think about it i am so hyped because Passimian <laughs> is one of my absolute favorite pokemon from sun and moon i love monkeys and maybe a lemur i'm not sure but i, love... <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what it is either. <laughs> i can't even tell but it it looks like it looks kind of like a monkey and it also is playing rugby and i love you know football rugby i love contact sports so it's just so cool and Back in Sun and Moon, I really wanted to use this thing. I tried so hard. I made so many cream teams, <laughs> and I just could not get Passimian to be an effective Pokemon. But now, <laughs> these new move tutors help it so much. The one move that I really wish it would have gotten that it didn't was Ice Punch, because obviously you got oh, things like nice. Landorus, Therian, and Gliscor everywhere. But um, other than at that... Least, at has... least with Gunk Shot, you can hit fairies now. Exactly. You could hit fairies with Gunk Shot because it had Iron Head, but that wasn't really strong enough. Now it has no. Gunk Shot. And then Knock Off is just so good for ghost types because it's just a mono fighting type. So um, that's definitely clutch. And what's particularly cool about Passimian is that its hidden ability is Defiant. Now, I heard rumors that you won't be able to SOS chain this thing in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Which means you may not be able to get it with its hidden ability. Oh, that's cool. I I, I, I hope they I hope they let us get it because oh, we, that'd be pretty awesome. It would be. Yeah, that would make it so Defiant, much better too. Holy crap! Right, like right. If if you get Defiant Passimian with all these new defoggers, then it just becomes so much more of a threat because um, with all this good coverage at plus two attack, not many things are going to be able to take hits from Passimian, and it would just become a great choice scarf user because its speed isn't great but it's good enough to outspeed most almost every pokemon 
that you're going to go against without a, a boost. So at plus one speed, yeah. with that power actually, and that, that coverage, it's going to be pretty nice if it gets defiant. Yeah, that actually completely escaped my mind that you could this could be used as a choice scarf, uh, like a defog check of sorts. Because if it's late game and your opponent uh, feels pressure to defog and their team has already been weakened, you come in with, yeah, with this choice scarf that plus two. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> that sounds so scary. Not I'm so lie. hyped. Oh, there's there's so much potential actually there now. Okay, so moving on to this next mod here. This is kind of like a a little mashup between Mudsdale here and Paleosan. The great thing about uh, Paleosan and Mudsdale this generation because of Mood Tutors is that they now get Stealth Rocks. Oh my lord! Like I don't I don't know why I feel so excited about it, but it's just finally Mudsdale. Like Mudsdale, in my opinion, honestly had nothing going for it in draft league format. Like it's really slow. Yeah, it's got a base 125 attack, but even its defenses are... I wouldn't say they're bad, but there's just nothing really Mudsdale can do. But now, with Stealth Rocks, it actually, it actually has some merit to being uh, drafted now. I've seen drafts that have had Mudsdale just as a ground type, and now this could be that lower tier ground type that... Oh, hey, it gets Stealth Rocks too, and it can still deal with most electric types as well if not all of them because of its decent bulk and then endeavor i think is, is also kind of cool if you run like an assault vest set on this you can now have endeavor just to be able to get off that last ditch uh, huge hit potentially and i think between stealth rock and endeavor i really would like to see mudsdale being used i wouldn't even mind using it myself honestly if it came down to it but what do you think maddie like do you think stealth rocks really add a lot to mudsdale or, or not absolutely i think that if if Mudsdale had gotten Stealth Rocks right before Ultra Sun and Moon, it would be a sick Pokemon because Stamina is an awesome ability that we never that really get to see in singles because you never see Mudsdale, but it really is a pretty cool ability and it allows Mudsdale to do some pretty crazy things with its bulk. It's natural, you know, it's got pretty good natural bulk and it's also a powerful Pokemon with good coverage. So if it had Stealth Rocks, then it would just be infinitely better because it could set up the most dangerous entry hazard in the game and prevent a lot of things from being able to remove on it because it just has good offensive coverage and stats so mudsdale would have been just such a beast had it gotten stealth rocks a little bit earlier but it's still a nice buff because like i said with a stamina you could do some pretty crazy things and i'm sure you can make it to where it could set up rocks on a lot of potential removers quite easily with its ability to boost its defense and you know every time it gets hit with an attack so that is just super cool and stealth rocks even though there may be a lot of new hazard removers stealth rocks are still a very dangerous entry ha hazard and a lot of the defoggers are flying types that are weak to stealth rocks so um, that is something to be noted that just getting up stealth rocks in the first place always puts pressure on your opponent to some extent so uh, Mudsdale with its really good attack, good moves, and now access to Stealth Rock, I think will be a much better choice for the draft format and even in standard tiers. Yeah, I, w I would like to see Mudsdale being used more often. So moving on to the next one, uh, I don't really think there's much to say about uh, Tapu Fini here. Uh, personally, I think that if Fini had had uh, the chance to have Icy Win and Knockoff, I think that would have made it a lot more valuable just as a utility mon. But there's still so many good things that Finny can do uh, in defensive roles, and it still can be a pretty good offensive threat. But I think between knockoff and icy win, like just being able to have those extra two new options for uh, for moves to help your team with, I think that does make Finny just a sl slightly slightly better, but not really anything too crazy, uh, if you ask me. What do you think of Tapu Finny, Maddie? Do you think it's gonna get any better because of these two moves, or or do you think it's still gonna be kind of the same? You know, um, with Icy Wind, not necessarily, just because it could already get Ice Beam. Icy Wind is definitely nice to make sure things can't uh, boost their speed on you and whatnot, or just to make sure that certain things are slower. So if you want to send in something else to maybe knock out that Pokemon, maybe you can more reliably outspeed it with the use of Icy Wind. But Knockoff is just a very good move. And even though it may not be a total staple on Tapu Fini sets, just the ability, just having the ability to be a little bit less passive and uh, punish certain switchings that maybe Nature's Madness or Moonblast might not be able to as much. 
would definitely be a, a good tech. So I think Tapu Fini definitely gets a solid buff with the ability to run knockoff. But like Leo said, I really don't think it's this game-breaking uh, new move tutor move. I think that it definitely helps Tapu Fini, but it's not all of a sudden going to just shoot up in effectiveness just because it could use knockoff. I agree. I agree. But yeah, Tapu Fini, really awesome Pokemon. I'm not going to lie. So moving on to the next one, kind of like the same boat in, is in... Blah, 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 I can't speak. <laughs> kind of in the same boat as Finny where it gets a, a new buff. And this is, I really think, like the craziest move tutor move that just went wild in Ultra Sun and Moon and it's Defog. Like so many, so many new Pokemon get Defog. And I mentioned this before and I really stick by it, but the fact that so many of these new Pokemon got Defog has just made them like so much more valuable in the tier. Like Superior is... I think a perfect example of a defogger that can beat so many common stealth rockers or just hazard setter users in general. What, what do you think about uh, defog on superior now, Maddie? Do you think it's like? I think it's like it's so good. Like I think it's, it's it has so much potential, honestly. I really yeah, do. I think you're definitely right because superior is, is a Pokemon that lately in the format I've been noticing more can be just a massive threat because if you can. If you could force your opponent's team to get weaker, then every time Superior comes in, uh, it could just keep overloading its checks by, you know, just clicking Leaf Storm, getting some damage, and, um, you know, either having coverage for that Pokemon that switches in, or just allowing them to keep coming in on hazards, whatever it is, and Superior is a big threat. So now with the addition of Defog, it is definitely going to be considerably better because, like you said, it can beat a lot of the hazard setters especially stealth rock because if you look at the majority of stealth rock users it is rock and ground types um they're definitely in the majority and they're definitely the best ones for the most part so a lot of the best hazard setters are food for superior because it can come in on ground type attacks it can come in on most bulky ground types fairly easily and just click leaf storm pretty safely because there's a good chance that a lot of these rock and ground types are weak to leaf storm so um, that is a scary prospect because Serp in general is a big threat and um, it forces out a lot of these these rockers. It either forces them out or could beat them just by clicking Leaf Storm. So if it forces them out, then it gets a defog off. And if it um, you know defogs and they stay in and try to attack or spam Stealth Rocks, you could just knock them out. So defog on Superior is definitely a nice buff for it. As I, I've recently, like I said been seeing how threatening it could be in the format now it just becomes all the more useful yeah i'm actually i've always been very hesitant to ever draft superior because i like like i'm not saying it's a bad pokemon but it's just not my type of pokemon it's really hit or miss but just defog again i really feel like that's that's a whole role that is now taken up by just superior that's just another role that your team doesn't have to worry about now because superior gets defog and that's great that's that's another huge thing about all these defog users now they take up one initial role that would have been needed by another team member and now you can make it something else which is pretty awesome so the next pokemon here is going to be tornadus and again it's kind of like the defog buff so i don't want to say too much about it but just the fact that tornadus has great bulk like tornadus already right now is a really good mon in draft league format in my opinion and just the fact that it can now have access to a form of getting rid of hazards with its great natural bulk and the fact that its ability literally just gives it back hp every time it switches in and out while i don't think this will make tornadus uh, as crazy as I think Defog makes superior now i still think Defog on tornadus is going to be really really awesome what do you think maddie yeah, I definitely agree, because Tornadus, even though it is weak to rocks, the Regenerator ability actually recovers more than Stealth Rock damage, so mm -hmm. it's not like your typical rock-weak defogger like Mandibuzz or Zapdos. I know it's not as bulky as those two, but it can be pretty bulky with a certain amount of investment, and the fact that it gets Regenerator just adds to its amount of bulk, because it just switches out and gains 33% um, back health, so... Yeah, Torn is already a great Pokemon across the board, and the fact that it has amazing coverage, the fact that it has Taunt, so it could defog and then prevent hazards from going back up because it could just, you know, taunt the hazard setter, and the fact that it has great speed to get off a fast defog if you really need it and you're in trouble, 
definitely raises its viability without a doubt, and that's pretty scary considering it's already an amazing Pokemon. So yeah, next Pokemon here is Klefki, and this this is very intriguing to me because this is Prankster Defog. Now, inadvertently, Dark types have got a buff in draft format because now if your opponent has Klefki or Whimsicott, which I know they're still fairy types, but like things like Skuntank and Drapion, uh, you can now use them as anti uh, hazard removing Pokemon because Prankster or non offensive Prankster moves don't affect Dark types now because of the other buffs that they got this gen. So that's kind of cool. I think that. That, that adds just so much more to Drapion and Skuntank as well as uh, Alola and Muk, uh, the Dark and Poison types, because now they could be anti-hazard removing Pokemon. Now, I don't think Defog on Klefki is going to make it absurdly insane, but I still think the idea of just Prankster Defog in general sounds kind of crazy because, again, you if you absolutely need to remove your hazards and your opponent doesn't have a Dark type, then you just bring in Klefki and just click defog and there's nothing they can do about it but sit there and watch you remove their hazards or remove their dual screens or anything like that. What do you think, Maddie, of Prankster Defog in general? Or Klefki, just both of it, why not? Yeah. Yeah, no, I <laughs> this is one of the ones that when I saw it I just shook my head because we have four new Prankster Defoggers. We have Klefki, Thunderous Eye, Thund uh, Tornado's Eye, and Whimsicott. And while not well all four of these pokemon traditionally wouldn't want to run defog you would think just the fact that they have that option to be able to remove hazards so easily at the click of a button without having to worry about much else is just super annoying for any type of hazard stacking team or offensive type of player like myself that really values the chip damage that hazards provide because everyone's thinking oh klefki sets up spikes why would it ever want to run defog okay maybe that's what you're used to Klefki doing, but that doesn't mean that's what Klefki has to continue doing. Klefki has a pretty good move pool, a good defensive typing, a great defensive typing, and um, can remove hazards easier than most Pokemon in the game because it gets priority on it. So exactly. um, that's annoying for me or just general people <laughs> who like to stack hazards because um, you could play it so well where you keep up the hazards, you keep up the offensive pressure, but then as soon as Klefki gets the chance to come in, it could just click defog and goodbye hazards. So um, I think this is going to yeah, have a pretty big impact. You can't be taunted format, to stop them either. There are four has uh, prankster defoggers, so interested to see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, this would be interesting. But I was going to say that you can't taunt it either. If it's got prankster, they're going to defog before you taunt them anyways. So True. again, that's just, it's crazy, man. Like I would not mind using Klefki again, just because of defog because now it just adds another role now you have to be worried about oh is Cluffy gonna have dual screens or is it gonna have spikes or is it not gonna be hazard removal I don't, I don't know but I think, I think it's pretty exciting so next up here we have Tapu Koko I think uh the interesting thing about Tapu Koko is that when it first was introduced to draft format uh, a lot of people never thought it would be around one pick but Tapu Koko has really flourished near the end of Sun and Moon, and I would dare say it's easily like top five best uh, Pokemon in draft form. Now, I could be wrong, but that, but that's just my thought on it because Tapu Koko just does so much, and Maddie will, of course, elaborate on everything. But just with it having Defog now, I think it, it's it's really good. Like Much like the other Pokemon that got Defog now, it just it adds that extra roll. It's also super fast already. It always can run something like a supportive set if it really came down to it. Although like even just an offensive uh, Defogger would be more than good enough, I think, for Tapu Koko to be able to run. But I'll let Mal Maddie touch on uh, Tapu Koko here. Okay, so with Koko, I agree with Leo is that and saying that it is a first round pick in the draft format it is awesome I, I love that pokemon because it is just one of the best momentum mons ever like tapu koko with its cr like really good speed ridiculous speed and amazing power especially in electric moves it forces so many switches so even though defog might not seem like the most crazy option on tapu koko it forces so many switches that you could defog more safely than you'd probably expect. Because normally you'd probably think, okay, I don't want my Coco taking damage. I don't really want to go for a move that could lose me momentum. But Tapu Coco does force so many switches that there's a decent chance you can 
force something out and go for defog and remove the hazards. The only problem is that it is an electric type and a good amount of hazard setters are ground type. So that could potentially block its effectiveness a little bit because if you defog on a ground type switch in, then they could just set up their rocks again. You may not want to stay in there and try to taunt them or anything because um, they could just knock you out with an earthquake. But the fact that Tapu Koko is just a really fast defogger is a, a nice role that it could play now, especially in the draft format, because if you really need to remove hazards as an emergency button type of thing, and you have a Pokemon as fast as Tapu Koko, there's a good chance you'll be able to defog late game um, and get off the hazard stack. So it definitely is a good option for Coco, which is an already amazing Pokemon. So yeah, Coco just got a little bit better because of it being able to just fulfill that extra role if needed. So moving on down to the final Pokemon. And again, this is just kind of like a little grouped up uh, decision here. But Slurpuff, Araquanid, and Ribombi all get Sticky Web this generation, which, or an Ultra Moon, sorry, not generation. You get, you guys get what I'm saying, but they get uh, Sticky Webs in Ultra Sun and Moon, and I think that's kind of cool. Like, I've never, personally, I've never drafted Sticky Webs myself, so I don't know too much about them, but just knowing that now that there, that there is now these extra, like, Sticky Web Pokemon out there, I think will make... Uh, if anything, Slurpuff and Ribombi may be a little bit more valuable. I don't know about Araquanid. I've never really seen it or faced it too much in Draft League format, but maybe it could be pretty cool with Sticky Webs. But that's the thing about it, though, is that, that now they can learn this move. That's an extra thing that you can now potentially just throw onto a team. Or it's something else that now your opponent has to prepare for and think, oh crap, he could easily bring this with webs and then that could be really bad. So that could be mind games you could play if you have these Pokemon that now get sticky web. And I think that in itself is just like a, a good enough like little extra buff that they could have. It's just playing those mind games too and all that. What do you think about the new sticky web mons, uh, Maddie? Like Araquanid, Slurpuff, and Ribombi. I, th I think they're pretty cool, especially the fact that Araquanid and, Ribom and um, Slurpuff are fairly bulky Pokemon, especially Araquanid. Um, they can they could run an interesting role where it's not like they're forced to be a lead sticky web user. They can come in on certain Pokemon that they're designed to check defensively and just kind of get up sticky webs the way you would get up Stealth Rocks with a with a defensive Landorus or you know a bulky Hippowdon, something like that. So the fact that Araquanid could do something like that so well, Slurpuff not as much, but the fairy typing is generally really good defensively, so if there's something it could check, like, I don't know, um, a, f a certain fighting type that just doesn't really have good coverage for Slurpuff, you can come in on that and just set up Sticky Webs without much to lose. And Araquanid hits so hard with Water Bubble Liquidation that there aren't too many safe hazard removers that could come in on it and just easily remove the webs. So I think it is a pretty big buff for Ara Araquanid. It definitely is a big buff for Slurpuff because Slurpuff's main role was being like a belly drum on bird in Pokemon. So now it is way less one dimensional. And Rabombi too. Rabombi is a pretty, it's a pretty sneaky offensive threat. Like I don't know if you'd ever really give your Z eligibility to Rabombi, but if there's a league where, where you have to give one of your <laughs> low tier mons a Z eligibility, then Rabombi could do it pretty well. Cause with Z moves, it is pretty powerful. And it also has access to things it like Pepper Dance pretty decent and stats. good speed. So, and it gets Defog too. So now Ribombi has a lot more roles. Oh god! <laughs> and <laughs> they're turning all my cream mons into legit mons, so I I I could respect that. They've given Maddie power. No. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like it's it's crazy, man. So that is going to round off our little list here, guys. Again, this this was what I think were some of the most interesting Pokemon that could definitely uh, be buffed and have more value in draft league format. If you guys stuck through the whole video i can't spit out my words damn it then <laughs> make sure to show off your support hit that like button down below let us know what you thought about the list what you think about these pokemon in general do you agree with the list do you disagree with it i don't know let us know your thoughts in the comment section below any parting words mr maddie brolic check out maddie of course check him out uh no nothing really just thank you so much to leo for having me on his channel um definitely enjoyed this discussion video because i'm so hyped for ultra sun and moon i'm trying to avoid the story spoilers but i just couldn't help it when it came to all the new moves and the new uh, pokemon so uh, i'm glad we got the chance to talk about it 
So yeah, once again, thank you to Mr. Metabrolic. And with that being said, guys, we'll see you. Oh, I will see you all tomorrow. You guys will see Maddie now because you're going to go check him out. So yeah. <laughs> bye. <laughs> nice. Say bye. Oh, 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 right. Goodbye, Leo's fan base. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where you're at, I'm not here to make friends, it's time to attack And deplete your HP with a final smash Don't make me turn around and pull a six foot hacks <laughs> Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks